Hello everyone, it's Martin Lush here from NSF Health Sciences to talk you through the six to fix on preventing a blame culture. Now when we were designing this six to fixing six program, uh, we actually asked all of you what subjects you'd like us to cover. And quite a common theme was, Martin, how do we go about preventing blame from coming into our organisations? Now, um, this wasn't entirely surprising because there's been a number of industry survey, uh, surveys conducted over a number of years that have concluded that blame actually exists in more industries and in more businesses than you would think. So what I want to do for this short, sharp session is to take you through the six things you must do. It's not a comprehensive list, but it's the six essential things that, in our opinion, at NSF, you should do to prevent the unintentional introduction of blame. Because let's, fa let's face it, most blame cultures are not intended. They happen through accident. Because who would want to introduce a blame culture when it is so damaging to people and ultimately so damaging to your business? Blame kills creativity, it kills teamwork, it kills relationships. It kills everything, and if you don't remove it, it ends up killing your business. So, let's take a look at the six things you've got to do to prevent the unintended consequences of blame. Step number one, changing attitudes to errors, mistakes, and problems. Just visualize, you're sat in your office, there's a knock on the door, it's one of your co-workers, it's one of your operators, and he, he or she informs you that he's just wasted, accidentally, uh, two-thirds of your batch because he opened the wrong valve. Uh, often the emotional response to that kind of mistake is exactly what drives blame. In other words, instead of creating the gap between the stimulus and the response, which is something we'll cover on the decision-making uh, uh, six to fix, you react emotionally. And that emotional reaction actually causes blame because of the fear that is created by it. So step one is about changing our attitudes to behaviours, uh, to uh, errors, by actually viewing them as learning opportunities rather than painful mistakes. Step two is about thinking error chain, not root cause. Actually looking at the systems and procedures that led to the mistake, that valve being opened in the first place. Maybe it was over complexity of uh, the SOP, maybe the operator was distracted, uh, maybe the design of the equipment was inappropriate. So by thinking error chain rather than root cause, it actually forces you to think beyond the surface of the problem. And in doing so, there's less emphasis on the person and more emphasis on the system. So that's step two. Step three, make sure your measures drive the right behavior. Certainly in our experience, the KPIs, the performance measures that people introduce, often drive a blame culture. You know, trying to get people to reduce or measuring people by reduction of deviations unintentionally creates a blame culture because those deviation incidents are seen negatively rather than opportunities to learn through prevention. So before you choose a performance measure, ask yourself this vital question. What behaviour do we want that measure to drive? Decide the behaviour first and then select the measure that will drive that behaviour. Never do it the other way around, otherwise you end up with behaviours uh, that are associated with blame. Step four seems pretty obvious. It's talk more. Um, failure to communicate unintentionally creates a blame culture if we're not careful, simply because if people don't know what's happening, they actually start to make things up themselves. Gossip takes over rather than the facts. So communication is really key. And remember, communication can only be done effectively face to face. So in this really busy world, it's getting busier and busier that we live in, often communication is sort of squeezed. It's seen as non-productive but really it's the most important aspect. So step four is communicate and talk more. Step five, uh, another obvious one, but not obviously practiced as, not, as much as it should be. And it's what Peter's referred to as management by walking about. 
you know, now people, managers, leaders at every level seem to be dragged off in every conceivable direction and often away from the production floor or where the actual work is done. So they lose touch with reality. They lose touch with the tensions and the pressures that people at the sharp end, people doing the job, are actually facing day to day. And when that happens, blame can unintentionally creep in. And step six is really important, and that's is, that is avoid complacency. What I mean by that is that you have to work really, really hard, consistently hard, day in and day out to drive out blame. Suddenly, all that can turn very, very quickly just by an inappropriate comment in an inappropriate uh, tone. Uh, because of the pressure that individuals are, on, are under at that particular time. So you can work really hard to create it, but blame can come tumbling back in very, very quickly. So once you are confident that you have a blame culture, never take it for granted. Work really, really hard to maintain that by doing step one, two, five. Change your attitude to problems. They're often the catalyst for blame. Think error chain, not root cause. Remember choose your behavior before choosing your measure. That's really key. Talk more and get onto the production line more often than probably you are doing at the moment. So your call to action, watch out when the next crisis hits. You know, in this turbulent world that we all live in, there's bound to be run, one around the corner that you never saw coming. And the reason for emphasizing this is that it's at that time of pressure and stress that crises bring, it's often when blame comes back in because people that are stressed and emotional often say the wrong things and, and that drives the blame culture to return. And as always, with all of these uh, six to fix in six videos, please go to this link for more resources. If you need any more information from me, any more suggestions on subjects that we may cover, please let me know. And again, if you've really enjoyed this video, please share it, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel.